Yo, what's shaking, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Orange Bloods Texas Football Channel, an unplanned uh, version of the channel. I'm Jeff Ketchum. That's on War uh, Richardson. Do us a solid. Uh, like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Do all of those things uh, that you know we ask you to do on a daily basis. Should be a unique show, less than... Oh, I don't know. 15 hours after Anwar and I joined you yesterday to let you know uh, that our sources were telling us uh, sources that we felt were pretty close to the situation that uh, Hudson Card was expected to be named the starting quarterback for Texas. Really, not even with the scrimmage uh, having a major influence on the decision, word comes out today that Quinn Ewers is the starting quarterback for the University of Texas, the complete opposite of everything that we had been hearing yesterday. Now, there's two sides of the discussion that Anwar and I will be having, right? Number one, probably the most important piece of this discussion is the actual news itself that Quinn Ewers is going to be the starting quarterback for the Longhorns entering the season. The second side of this, obviously, lots of egg on my face. Uh, lots of egg on orange bloods in general. Doesn't really matter that both of our major competed competitors on the website side of things were kind of reporting the same thing, even as early as this morning. Uh, the bottom line is we got it wrong. There is definitely some atonement that will have to take place for getting it wrong. Uh, I am not a person that likes to be wrong. Uh, but we absolutely got it wrong. There will be some discussion on that. Uh, but first, Anwar, the news itself, again, way more important than our feelings or our sources or any of the future comments that will occur on the Internet that it's Hudson or whatever it might be. Quinn Ewers is the starting quarterback. Steve Sarkeesian not waiting until tomorrow's scrimmage to have any of it impact what may or may not happen, your initial thoughts? Um, you know, it's a, you know, it's a, it, you know, it's an interesting the, the decision, the timing of it. You know, it was, like you said, it's very interesting where he could have waited into the scrimmage, but you know, he did say on Thursday he had a good idea uh, of who that person was and who that person was going to be. Um, you know, and then you know, it's a you know, he went ahead and pulled the trigger on on that decision and you know and then obviously it's with Quinn Ewers and you know I think for me you know it's 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 it becomes a thing that it's up to Steve Sarkeesian to make sure that Quinn is ready he feels like Quinn is ready but it's up to Steve Sarkeesian to you know not only you know make sure he's ready but to be patient to grow with him to learn with him to go through the growing pains that it, you know that occurs with a redshirt freshman to be expected to give him a long leash um, and to have to give him that room to grow. Uh, but, you know, you go with the future. And, you know, Hudson Card, you know, I always question, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, could you do that thing with Hudson? And could you could you go down that road there again? And I think when it's all said and done, so you didn't feel like he wanted to go down that road. He wanted to turn the page. Uh, he wanted to move forward with that, that whole situation. So, you know, it's, you know, we'll get to the reporting aspect of it, but, you know, overall it ends up being a decision that, you know, prior to, you know, 24 hours, I think ago or so, I think the majority of us would have come to expect, um, majority of us believed. And so, you know, it ends up being the thing that, that is happening. And by the way, it's not, uh, me barely talking. It's just, I don't have alcohol in me. So you, this is, this is sober onward in the morning. I think in the end, Quinn Ewers is the guy that we've expected all the way through camp of being the starter. In a weird way, this does feel like Tyrone Swoops and Shane Bouchelle all over again. I mean, really, it feels like 2.0 of that in the sense that we spent the entire camp saying that Quinn Ewers was almost certainly going to be the starter. In fact, I was bemoaning the fact that last night that I had been saying – Hudson Card had no chance to win the job. And then here we were being told by sources incredibly close uh, on the ground floor of this situation, people that would absolutely have insight into what was going on, that it looked like it was going the other direction. 
I think for the Texas football team, it's the right play. I mean, we'll see. You know, I, I think it's weird. I, I think back to the conversations that we were having said yesterday or late last night about this thing, and a lot of them still apply to this moment. I still think both quarterbacks are going to play this season. I still think we may be looking at a quarterback position that throughout the year is a bit of a yo-yo. The same things that we said about Hudson Card going into the Alabama game, you can say about Quinn Ewers going into the Alabama game, that so much of that game is surviving. And then what do things look like going into week three or week four? You know, I think Quinn, I think if you're Hudson Card, you do the exact same thing that I said if you were Quinn Ewers, you would do, which is buckle down, put your nose in the playbook, and know that your time will come at some point. Uh, whether it be through injuries or ineffectiveness. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, us doing this video announcing Quinn Ewers as the starter isn't a surprise. Again, it's what we would have expected outside of a brief 18-hour window that started yesterday. I'm completely confused, Anwar, by – our sourcing on this and why from their perspective, there was a screaming of fire in a crowded theater when on Friday that doesn't feel justified. And, you know, there's no way to get around it. We kind of got fucked on this matter. And <laughs> I would have, I will have some questions for my own sources on this. Moving forward, um, we all had sources yesterday telling us that this was coming down the pike uh, as it relates to the egg on the face. And I don't even have a heart to look at what's coming through on the chat. I get it. I've lived it. I've been doing this for two and a half decades on Orange Bloods. I know what the fallout on something like this is. Um it's a curious matter to be involved in. It's even more curious that, so yesterday, I, I just have a thousand questions about the last 24 hours and what role we played in this potentially. I 1000% believe if we don't report what we did in the war room yesterday, that there's not an early Friday announcement that Sarkeesian is named Ewers as the starter. So I feel like we definitely influenced to some degree the rollout in this. I'm just confused in retrospect by our sourcing that painted such a different picture than apparently the one that exists. I don't know if it's the hope that they had that this might cause things to go the other way. I don't know if they were just wrong, but if they were just wrong, I don't know why they were wrong in the fashion that they were wrong in. I find myself a bit confused. I, I, I can't explain in the moment we're doing a video literally as the announcement comes place. If I look back into our Slack channel, you and I both, got messages on this in real time at 1218 we're doing it's 1259 so word came down 40 minutes ago so we haven't really had time to explore the how and the why and all of the things that would have led to us having wrong reporting yesterday I'm just curious by it all. Um, I mean, there, there's there, there's definitely um, questions to to be asked and answers. You're to goddamn be asked. right. There's some questions to be yeah. asked. There's, there's questions to be asked. Uh, things that are, uh, you know, answers to be had at, at some point. So, um, you know, it is. You know, I think it's, it's every once in a while. You know, this. That portion of it can't be spoken on at this moment. 
of as far as you know the the whys you know that i don't know if it's pretty hard to speak on that that you know we, we just got the news and everything there hasn't been a chance to really double back with folks uh, and ask the questions that uh will provide some answers to people who are you know are here at this moment you know all, all i you know i know i i was th with all the facts presented you know, my only thing was, you know, yesterday was, I, you know, I kept saying, I got to see it to believe it. With all the facts present, I just have to see it to believe it, to 100% co-sign on it. Just because, because of it ain't even close. Because of, it's as factually as things could be, the, I still, I'm like, All right, I, I didn't want to jump to the, this is it. This is the finality of it. Um... It was see like it there was it was something about it. It was almost like it was too easy. It was something about it that at the end, as we started talking to the to the, the mod cat our, our, our presentation our video, as it just made it made me a little uneasy. And no, I really but, wish you had told me that before we posted the war room. We oh, <laughs> Catch! Uh, I mean, what we're gonna we're gonna argue back and forth here? Well, no, I'm just this? saying that I'm listening to you say today. That in retrospect, you wanted you were you backing asked me a off slot in real time, and I gave you my answer in real time. You, uh, you and you kept pushing me on something, and I gave you my answer in real time, which was I still need to see it. That's and fine. I, I'm just and, 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 we, and we talk about the war room. I, the only thing I said is you know, this this hedge it a little bit. That's all. Fair enough. Uh, again, I think the thing that. The most important thing in this discussion is the analysis of Quinn Ewers being the starting quarterback. The story isn't us or or me for that matter. Uh, the story is most importantly Quinn Ewers. Let's start with <laughs> let's start with the the notion that he's the starter going into game one. What does it mean? The same questions we were asking about Hudson Card yesterday. What does it need to look like? What does he need to do to keep this job? Um, you know, we said in the modcast yesterday that we thought that Quinn Ewers would have more slack than Hudson Card. Is that still an opinion that we have today that, you know, that he, does he have more slack than Hudson Card did a year ago where – Hudson's named the starter. He's really good for four quarters. He has a disaster against Arkansas and then really wasn't a factor beyond that for most of the season. How different is this decision for you versus the one made a year ago? I feel like this is a permanent uh, decision, to be quite honest with you. Like, I feel like this is a, a decision that I think this is Sark's guy. I think this is moving away from Hudson card um, going forward. And, you know, I just, you know, 100% just feel like this is, this is it. So I think this is the, the growing pains, you know, that you're, you're going to see and endure, but, you know, I just don't think, I think this is Sarkeesian officially turning the page on, on Hudson. I think it's him moving forward. I think it's, he's, he starts in, in week one. And is here until week twelve or in potentially beyond, um, but you know I just think this is this is the this is the Quinn Ewers era that I think everyone anticipated would happen the moment that he decided that he would verbally commit to the University of Texas, um, you know, and it ends up being his team. He now has a scrimmage on Saturday, so you know he gets to have you know get to get to take the majority of the reps going forward. Uh, you know, obviously the following week and then get ready for the season opener. You know, the, it becomes essentially Sarkeesian handing the keys to the city uh, over to Quinn Ewers. And Quinn Ewers, Steve Sarkeesian must trust. Like, I think the one thing, I don't know that I trust Steve Sarkeesian to stick with Ewers through hell or high water. I mean, just based off of what happened to Ewers a year ago, uh, but I think they do need to stick with Ewers, that he's supposed to be the guy. And, and if he's not the guy, 
it does bring some real questions about the future of the Steve Sarkeesian era. I mean, it's not just that Quinn Ewers is the starting quarterback. He needs to be a really good starting quarterback the sooner the better because, you know, I think this is one of the things about the news yesterday when we reported it, which, you know, I guess you can't call it news if it ends up being wrong. It's just uh, one of the things about the incorrect report from last night is that you could really sense the unease with which the Texas fan base really is coming into the season that all it took was for some quarterback discussion to not go the way that most people I think wanted it to go. And then suddenly there was a lot of, well, this team's going five and seven and this team's going four and eight and six and six looks like the, the, the proper like median of the record for this team Last night, I I wasn't ready to change a prediction. Like, I, I needed some time to kind of let all of this sink in and soak in the idea that Hudson would be the starter. You know, the truth about the quarterback position right now is kind of what it was a year ago. There's not a huge difference between the two. So, a year ago, our thought process was, it's probably a seven and five team, an eight and four team, regardless if Hudson or Casey plays. And because there's not a huge difference, I think, in one loss between the two, the smart thing to do would have been to play Hudson card throughout because you were investing long term into future seasons. I kind of feel that way now. Like I wasn't really budging off of my one loss record from most of the preseason, kind of eight and four-ish. I don't know that either quarterback changes the dynamics of how good this team is going to be this year. But if the future is Quinn Ewers, then you got to let that guy grow and suffer and grow some more. And, you know, it's, it's going to be a process. There will almost certainly be some bumps in the roads, but – in order to get the most out of Quinn Ewers, you've got to let him experience the highs and the lows. And that's part of the quarterbacking process. And I think that the thing that I would say today, Friday in August, 15 days before the first game, if Quinn Ewers is the future and he's the starter, even if it looks bleak at, in moments, you have to ride that thing out and stick with him. I mean, this can't be a repeat of a year ago where, let's say Ewers has a bad game against Alabama, you know, because they're Alabama. And then in the middle of the third quarter, you go to Hudson Card. And then he has a touchdown drive or two. And we're arguing about, well, did Alabama care? Yeah, their starters were in for one of those. You know, you know what we did against the Arkansas game a year ago in terms of Hudson or Casey, you know, even if Ewers gets the hook in that game, they just to save his ass, if nothing else, that next game against UTSA has got to be a Quinn Ewers production. And if it's not... I will be questioning somewhat what's going on behind the scenes because if you're going to pick a young quarterback, um, you got to ride that thing out. Quarter, young quarterbacks are going to be young quarterbacks. They are not going to give you the stability and the week to week kind of high, high floor. You know, we always talk about ceilings, but sometimes it's about not having a low basement. If his basement gets low, you just can't give up on the guy. And I think that did happen a year ago. Yeah, I mean, that's what I said. You know, when when Bama happens, you just got to let Bama happen, you know. And, and if UTSA ends up being whatever, you know, close or at halftime, whatever it is, you just got to let it happen. You, he has to be your guy, you know. You, you can't – now, I do believe the difference between the two – um, you know, first of all, he didn't, you know, Casey versus, you know, Hudson, neither one of those guys were his, you know, neither one of those guys were his guys. So 
it would be easy to kind of go back and forth. Quinn Ewers is his guy. That's his quarterback. That's the guy that he signed. That's the, the guy that he believed in. So at that point, he's he's just going to have to ride it. He's going to have to let it go. He's just going to let it have to do the damn thing. And, you know, we'll see what happens when it, it, everything that goes forward. And uh, if there are problems as far as, you know, learning or playbooks, whatever things to that effect, well, that's going to be on Sarkeesian to make sure that his quarterback is ready to go every single week and prepared. Uh, but that becomes the guy that he hitches his wagon to. Um, I always thought, you know, if he goes with Hudson and then pulls and it just it looks weird. So now he just stays with him uh, the entire time and he's got a quality backup ready to go uh, if Quinn gets injured. What do you think is going through the mind? Am I back? Yeah, Sorry you're back now. You're back now. You said going through the mind and it, and it froze. Yeah, there was just a sense yesterday, I think, that some of the opposite of what has been announced today was starting to sink in. Um, when yours got to be a pretty excited guy, Hudson Card, <laughs> I mean, probably, I don't know. I mean, if you're Hudson Card, obviously you're disappointed. I think the thing that we would, I think, both say about Hudson is that he may have an advantage in the areas that we were talking about last night with the playbook, with the expectations of the mental side of the position. But he didn't do enough. And we were even saying this last night. It didn't feel like Hudson Card just won the damn job and, and you know, and outperformed Hudson to such a degree that it became obvious. It, it felt more like Quinn had started from a winning position and potentially lost it that, you know, that – this thing was set up for him to win, we thought, in the beginning. And, um, you know, I, I my mind's a little blank right now with where I was going at the beginning of that point. But on the field, nothing has happened that would make either one of them separate significantly. Let me ask you this question. Do you think they both play in the opener – before the fourth quarter. I don't uh, – so the, basically Hudson. Does Hudson play before the fourth quarter? Yeah, because I think that the eyeballs I, and practices and scrimmages would tell you this thing was fairly close. I don't, think treat, you, I, don't think, I don't think you can play Hudson. Yeah. I, you know, I think you got you to gotta say to yourself, uh, Catch – that guy, Quinn, hasn't played since his junior year in high school. I think he's got to take every college rep possible. And, you know, I don't think you can – I don't think you have the luxury uh, – you know, I don't think C. Sarkeesian has the luxury of wasting any reps that he can get within a real game. So, um, you know, unless it's immensely out of hand. And Quinn has just done the damn thing, and we're talking about – you know, 55 to 10 heading into, you know, the fourth quarter. And it's just like, whatever. Then, okay, I, I maybe, maybe. But, you know, I still want – give him some – let him do some handoffs. Like, let him just do some little things, um, protect him. But, no, I, I think he's got to – he's got Alabama the next week. Like, I don't think you can, he can just sit back and relax and say – That's a great point. You know, all right, I'm cool. You know, well, I'll see you next week, Nick Saban. Like, nah, nah, nah. He's got to take Do you think it would have been different if if our reporting from last night had come to fruition and Hudson Card was the starter? Do you think Ewers plays before the fourth quarter? Yes. I would say, what about you? I agree, but I think for all the reasons that you just listed for Ewers, for Card not to play because Alabama's the following week, you probably shouldn't. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. these quarterbacks come with a different set of circumstances, and there's no way to get around the fact that Quinn Ewers is Steve Sarkeesian's guy. He is a number one overall consensus player in the country, and I think with that come some expectations. 
Uh, I have a couple of more questions for you, and I'll give answers to both along with them. Okay, cool. Where's your one loss record today? Because this is a question that I got last night yeah. that kind of threw me for a loop because I just wasn't – all of my thought process all se- offseason has been Quinn Ewers is going to be the guy. This is what I think the team is going to do. And in the immediateness of us doing a video right after our report, I hadn't given a lot of thought towards what does this mean for the one loss record in a world where he's a 12 game starter. I I catch. I still think it's the same. I still think we're in the same category. I still think we're somewhere between, you know, maybe seven and five and eight and four. I still think nothing has changed because when we made those predictions, um, all those predictions were made with the assumption of Quinn Ewers being the, the, the starting quarterback, right? So I don't think any of that changes. We know for sure that, you know, well, I would say for sure, but we know Cam Williams looks like he's going to be, you know, the left tackle. DJ Campbell's going to be the inside guy, you know, and then, you know, you have the other parts on the on the offensive line. It's not to say those guys are bad by any stretch of the imagination. Clearly, uh, those guys are good, very good players, especially to potentially start at the University of Texas as a freshman. But they're still freshmen, and they're still going to be. And not to say if anything goes wrong, it's going to all going to be on them. But you've got an offensive line that essentially would will only be working together for the next few weeks, and it takes months for that kind of continuity to to develop. Uh, you know, we still we have questions about what the defense is going to look like. You still have a young quarterback; he's going to have his ups and downs. Like there's going to be good days, there's going to be bad days, there's going to be amazing throws, and there's going to be some head scratchers. And so. It's hard for me to make a jump to this, right? And, and, and all of a sudden, we're, we're talking about Big 12 Championship game. I just think, to me, it's about making the, the the small changes and getting a little bit better. So I'm still somewhere between, you know, seven to five, uh, eight and four, somewhere in there. Yeah, I'm in the same place. I'm, I wonder if eight and four is optimistic, mm-hmm. mainly because – Quarterback play this and and so far in camps not been great to say the least. I mean, if you had stripped away everything that we've ever said about the quarterback positions prior to August, and then only based the answer to this question off of things that we've heard throughout camp, God, I don't even want to say the numbers out loud because it's demoralizing and kind of scary to think about, but, you know, it kind of the question, I mean, at this point, I think you've got to bake into the puzzle that Quinn Ewers is going to turn the ball over this season, maybe an average of one per game, which that's fumbles and interceptions together. Casey Thompson had what nine last year. Yes. And he didn't play all of the games. So he probably would have been on pace for like 13 or 14. Mm -hmm. Quinn for me is going to throw double digit interceptions this season. If he plays 12 games, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, maybe he goes slightly under that, but I think one of the things and correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the things I think Texas fans need to be prepared for is that this is, well, this is a quarterback position that is absolutely evolving. And that even in scrimmages, There are too many turnovers. There are too many sacks that are being taken. There are too many assignments that are being missed. And they've got two weeks to clean that up before like a one loss record starts to get attached to it. And the stats count. Yeah. But you know what's going to happen though, catch, you know, you, you know, that as fate will have it, we're going to hear everything amazing about the scrimmage on Saturday are going to end up being one of the most amazing scrimmages that there ever was. You know, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be be in the house on, on Saturday. So I'm sure that Sark will script it just a little bit in, in Quinn's favor. You know, ones so versus threes. <laughs> Maybe something like that. And it, you're going to be like, my God, Quinn looked amazing. Like how what everything he does. Okay. Then again, if Michael Taft is part of the threes, he I think Michael Taft gets an interception because uh, that's I, I think I, I like I like Michael. Um, the, uh, I, I before all this happened today on War, I reached out to a source of mine and said, "Hey, uh, can can I pick your brain tomorrow on the scrimmage?" And his answer was, 
it depends how bad it is. <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? Is there eight turnovers you're not talking to me? But like as long <laughs> well, as as long as it's clean, you will like as long you know as it's positive. Yes. And I think that's where I think tomorrow will probably be the most positive. I, I, you know, now that'll be my prediction. I, it'll be the one of the most positive practice reports uh, that we've heard all of all season. I had a second question that I have for the moment forgotten. Um, feel free to ping me with questions. Don't do that. If you have any. Hmm. We can just, it, no, you can just cut it. You don't have any questions? <laughs> Oh, you meant? I thought you meant the public. I was like, oh, I was oh, like, no, I'm not even looking at the chat. Oh, got, I was like, don't do that. Don't I've got the that. graphics thing put up. You know, okay. look, look at the end of the day. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a moment to uh, to think of a question if you want to ask them. I I got a, I got a question for you. Okay. I got I do have a question for you. Knowing that we have knowing that Quinn is the guy, um, how much does Sarkeesian say put it in his hand and say Quinn you have to be the guy that wins it and how much does he look at guys like Bijan and and Roshan and maybe even the safe you know the safety valve of Jatavian and how much does he say look you know I I want I want at least running game to win it and then secondly how much will he will he play it safe or will he let it fly I think I think the smart, the smartest thing that they can do is lean on the running game early in the season. I think you don't want Quinn Ewers throwing it 35 times a game. Not that he wouldn't throw some touchdowns, right? Because his high points are going to be really high. But you want to try to mitigate the game-changing negatives, which, you know, it's – Sark mentioned last Thursday, I believe, that he hates it when his quarterbacks take sacks. And then literally the next time Texas had a practice in the scrimmage, Ewers took a handful of sacks that you know would have burned Sarkeesian up. That's not what he wants. But it's a reminder. that, And look, even in the practice on Tuesday, you had both quarterbacks making multiple what would be game-changing mistakes? I I have to believe that what's being said in the coach's room at this point is we cannot put too much pressure on Quinn. That the best thing we can do is ask him to be a bus driver. And coaches hate that expression, right? They they hate the idea of a game manager. They don't want to pigeonhole a guy. But guys like Ryan Tannehill play in the NFL a long time because they do exactly that. They they steer the bus. Their high points may not be as high as a Patrick Mahomes, but they don't often have the low points either. And I just have to believe that they've got B. John Robinson in the backfield. I went to HEB today in the Woodlands. I looked for that Bijan mustard. Oh, I, was did like, you? I didn't find it. But I was like, you know what? I'll make a sandwich today for lunch and I'll put some Bijan mustard on it to see how good this mustard is. Uh, I've been looking for, you know what, Catch? It's funny. I, I, I did a little something on uh, working, you know, a little bit this morning on my, uh, my Sunday column. And I said, of all the NIL deals that have been done, that's been the only one I've seen that's actually wanted me to try the product. The product. I Kinda like much. a good spicy mustard or like a deli mustard. Yeah. So I was definitely going to give it a chance, but you've got a guy in your backfield that has his own mustard. So lean on Mr. Mustard. And I think I would do that as soon as week one. Because I have to believe against Alabama, as best they can, they've got to move the chains on offense. They've got to keep their defense off the field. They've got to be able to wait to sustain possessions. Their best player, with all due respect to Xavier Worthy, who, let's full transparency, I kind of think Xavier is their best player. But player 1A or 1B is, is Bijan. 
and you can give him the ball without risking a turnover in the hands of your quarterback. Consequently, if Xavier is your other best player and you have to get him the ball, I think you want to find a way to get him the ball, screens, little, you know, short passes, um, all of the ways that you can get Xavier the ball without it being turnover jeopardy involved. And you can't win a game like that against Alabama, but you've got, but those types of things will be the way that can keep you in a game. And then at some point you'll need Quinn to make some throws. But if you're asking that guy to make a lot of throws, you know, there might be a few highs in there, but I would anticipate some lows. And there are certain teams on this schedule that if you have multiple low moments, it becomes really harder to win those games. Not just Alabama. Yeah. So, Dan, I mean, no, I totally agree with you on on that that concept. And, and so what is this? What does this mean for Hudson going forward, Catch? I mean, is this is this pretty much the end? Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, of it. I mean, you know, is it, it just it's just simplistic as all right, go get your go get your degree and then go somewhere else? Because this would be year two, where you know he he lost his job last year in the season, and now he's losing it before the season. I mean, I think there's a message that's being sent from Sarkeesian is that I feel like there's other people that's coming along that that are that is better than you. What does that mean for Hudson going forward? Well, if you take out the last 18 hours prior to this exact moment, I think that things haven't changed. So I think long-term future, I mean, he probably doesn't have a future. The, the, the storybook on this, the story that's been told for really the last nine months, even as it goes into the recruitment of Arch Manning, is that Quinn Ewers would be the starter for a couple of years. Arch could come in and redshirt in what would, in theory, be Ewers' last season because the Ewers camp, if you will, um, has given off – You know, he went to Ohio State to start his eligibility clock. The plan has always been – three years in college, go to the NFL. Texas has kind of sold that to Arch, that he'll be here for a year, the year that you're redshirting, so no pressure. And then in your second year that you can be the starter. And one of the things we were talking about yesterday was like, how does this change the plan that has been kind of laid out to everybody? I think if you're Hudson – the smart money, even if he was the starter in week one, there's no guarantee that he'd be the starter in week five. So I think the long-term solution for him is that he's going to have to transfer. I think the short-term answer is that he just needs to be ready. He's going to play this season. There, there you, I mean – If I set the over and under on Quinn starts at 10 and a half, where would you go? Well, if if there's an under, something bad happened, right? Yeah, but it's college football and bad things happen all the time. And this is an offensive line that we've got major question marks. I mean, you know. I guess I'm asking this question is I anticipate at some point this season, Hudson will get a chance. I don't think that means that he gets a chance to keep the job forever. Mm-hmm. But if you're asking, what does this mean for Hudson? I mean, look, when we report, when I guess I reported yesterday, last night that Hudson was projecting to be the starter we were already discussing a world of what might it look like through the first couple of games. What does it look like through the, let me, let me ask you this. Texas beats, beats Louisiana Monroe. They lose. I don't know how to describe the Alabama game. Let's say they lose by three touchdowns that it's, 
47 to 25 or something like that. Okay. They beat UTSA, but Quinn's not great. And then they lose on the road in Lubbock and they're two and two. And we're showing up to press conferences asking about how do you feel about the quarterback? Like, you know, is, is there a point? Is it Quinn no matter what? Or if the things that have caused them to have some pause with Quinn show up in games, what's the break glass moment? If there is one. I mean, it would have to be, the you know, multiple turnovers <laughs> and him just not being able to articulate how the hell those turnovers are happening or why they're happening. Like it would, it would have to be something criminal because the moment, the moment I, catch, I think you know, you correct me if you think I'm wrong. I, and, and, and you know what guys, if you're in the chat, you know, this would be a good time for you guys to, you know, add into it. You know, what, what becomes the the level of forgiveness that you have with Quinn Ewers as your starting quarterback? Like, because you you know, it, it, unless you're expecting eleven and one or ten and two, you kind of understand that. All right, this is the things that are these things are probably going to happen. Catch, I think the moment he decides, like, I, I'm going to go away from Quinn Ewers. Something bad, something bad is freaking happening, right? Something, something horrific is happening, and I don't know if you want it. If he wants to do that, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I've always said, catch. I feel like seven and five under Quinn Ewers feels different than seven and five under Hudson Card, right? I just, I still, even if it's seven and five, I feel like you feel like you're growing with him, and you, you'll get better next season, especially with the young offensive line. You know, you know, I think. Yeah, I would take my approach to it is, you know, it may not be everybody's approach to it. Catch will be, I still think of this year as kind of another building year, you know, before we're talking about where this team could eventually be. So to me, I'm willing to say, if you're saying, Hey, this team is two and two after Texas tech. I, for me, I'm like, I would probably be better to judge it in those last six games. What's going on. But the first, the first six, you know, I just I expect a freshman quarterback to be a freshman quarterback. Yeah, but Hudson Card didn't get that. Is it because there's no Casey Thompson yes. waiting in the wings? Correct. Like there's because no Casey. What, and, what and, you're and, talking about are considerations that Hudson didn't receive a year ago. Correct. But my thing is he didn't recruit Hudson either. So there was no there's no emotional investment. There was no fan base, you know. Well, I guess there was a lot. There was a fan base that did want Hudson Card. That, that's let's go. That is true. But we know this fan base wants Quinn Ewers. We know the BMDs want Q, Quinn Ewers, and so that's why I think it'll be treated differently because I think Quinn's status is just so much different than what Hudson's status is. Fair enough. Any other questions? Uh, no. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. I appreciate well, us doing it. I think I have, I can't, I, I have to take a little bit of medicine first. So let me Bro. go into the chat. Let me at least look up the super chats. And, uh, you know, cause I don't, I'm not going to be a punk on the matter. Right. So there's no getting around the fact that this is egg on my face that the I would say blood. in the last blood. deck, what's that? It's orange bloods. It's not, it's not. It's no, not. it'll be my egg. In the last 10 years, going back to 2011, well, last 11 years, you've had it's Austin. You've had 85%. And I've been good to make it like half a decade plus without a new, uh, a new thing that will end up on my tombstone. But. Uh, this one will be there. So I wouldn't feel right about leaving uh, the this without taking a little bit of medicine. So let me see if I can find some questions that adequately. Then th there is this. I made you lose your house last night. 
<laughs> I did not want to bet my house, but I had to uh, bet someone. I forced Anwar to bet his house. Uh, apologies for that. When I do the uh, next, when I do the next video, you see my kids running around in the tent uh, underneath the uh, overpass. Um, we lost the house. Jay says, and by the way, there's no egg on y'all's face. You guys do great work. It is what it is. Jay, I do appreciate that. I don't know that I agree with you. I've been doing this for a quarter of a century. I know what it means to get it wrong. So I literally have people that reference on a daily basis a mistake that I made 11 years ago. So with all, I, I pre, believe me, Jay, I do appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> it's nice to have people say nice things. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to, I'm not going to run from it either. Uh, we've got another one here. I think that says Dylan, but my eyes can't quite see Dylan Alexander. Yeah. Did the boosters hear the card rumors and set Stark straight? I'm partially joking. I don't think so. I mean, I've been involved in stories where that's happened. I don't know the motives of some of our sourcing on this. I mean, look, let me let me read. Reached out to one of my best sources. One of my very best sources yesterday. And I said, um, let me go back to it. Let me find it. Let me find it. Sorry, he and I had quite a conversation via text messages. I sent him a message yesterday and was like at 350 and said, card is going to start, question mark. Wow. I said, I'm shocked. Uh, he said, I haven't heard. Assumed he was going to tell us Saturday morning. I knew it was trending that way. Now, that's not like a source I would use in a story, but it's just a conversation that I had with a source, a high level source that I use for a lot of various things. He did not tell me, slow your roll. He did not tell me, Quinn Ewers is definitely going to be the starter. He told me, I knew it was trending that way, assumed it was going to be Saturday morning when the announcement was made. Now, this same source is good enough that he was one of, we literally started getting pings on war like a, an hour ago, an hour and 15 minutes or so. And he was one of the very first people to send me a note that saying Quinn was the starter. So I bring all of that up. To say you, you can block that guy permanently or what? Well, no, to say... I don't know that there was a lot of, I don't think people were trying to put oil in the water purposefully. I don't, I don't know. Think, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to go that far. Okay. I'm not going to go that far. There's some, there's some, there's some stuff where for it to make a dramatic turn, I feel, I feel like some folks were trying to play some folks is what I, that, that's just my belief. That's you just, think that's some just people belief. tried to just flat out make us look bad? Yeah. You do? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I believe that's what I believe. I don't believe, I don't, whatever that movie is, it talked about the Mexican mafia and they don't believe in coincidences. In this one, I don't believe this is a coincidence. I think this, there was some deliberate shit that was put out uh, or on purpose. I don't, I don't believe it was an accident. I, I, I'm, I won't, I, I know you're trying to be nice and kind in this one. Nah, some folks are trying to, I think some folks are trying to play OB. That's why. So you think we got played to a certain extent? Yeah. Fair we haven't enough. had a chance to talk like, like all our videos, we haven't had a chance to talk beforehand. Yeah. But I, I do believe because you, what was what was said beforehand and what happened 
within how many hours of it, you know, 18 hours or so later was so, uh, so different. Like, nah, this, this is, this, I believe this is a, some deliberate shit right here. I'm just, just keeping it real. I believe it was some deliberate stuff. Now, well, and look, you know, full transparency. This wasn't like this was a corroboration of of sourcing from yesterday. So all of our sources come from different places, right? The guy that I'm specific- can, can, can you can you hold that for a second, Cash? You just hold that second, just one second. Hold that corroboration of different sourcing, so on and so forth. I just want to say for the record, though. Um, the, we were not the only, as always, the Orange Bloods were, were the only one that people recognize or talk about. We weren't the only ones that reported it. Okay, so we, you know, there, there's, there, I, I, I'm not gonna get it, be a, a little bitch and name names, but there's at least one other website that went pretty hardcore that said Hudson Card was going to be that be, be named the starter. So I understand that there's a OB catch has to take the lumps or fall on the sword and this and that. But if we're just keeping it real, it it wasn't just an OB thing. It's just people look at OB because it has the most eyeballs. So that's what it is. And it doesn't make you us or anyone else feel better. But it, to, to paint that it's an orange blood's on the island by itself is kind of like disingenuous. That's all. You can go back to what you said. Yeah, gonna say. well, I mean, you and I are used to that. I mean, yeah. No, the only scorecard that gets kept is if Orange Bloods ever gets anything wrong, you know, there, there's no scorecard that gets kept. I mean, even the Tyrone Swoops thing back in the day, every website reported what we reported. And all these years later, eh, nobody holds that against them. I tend to think, tell you what I would like to do. I think I'd like to meet face to face with a couple of people today. Just you know, yeah. Uh, twenty. Uh, we gotta go. We gotta go. Twenty four hour rule on this one. Probably, probably. Rule. I think we I'm just go saying that in four years from now, when it's Hudson is still popping up on Orange Bloods, there might be a couple of people that even twenty four hours later, I'd like to strangle the shit out of. Mm. Uh, not to death or anything, but like. To the point of gasping for air, I think I'd like to choke them to that level. Uh, but look, at the end of the day, you have to be right. And no excuses. We didn't get it right. And I'm not one of those people that runs from that. Like, we have a big responsibility. And it's important that we not get it wrong. We got, it, I, we got it wrong yesterday. My name was on it. We did a video last night that talked about what we were reporting. Can't pretend today that that didn't happen. So, like, we move on. We move on to the next story. It never stops. I mean, our job on it, we, we have thousands of stories over the course of a year that we're constantly covering and trying to get right. We didn't get this one right. I didn't get this one right. The bullets will come for me. I will put my bulletproof vest on, take as many as I can. And um, it's the world that we live in. And, you know, there's not a whole lot else I can say to that. I mean, I'm not going to run from it. I don't really want to apologize because we're just trying to do the best job that we can do. I'm regretful. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to get it right. And we didn't. And the goal moving forward will to do a better job next time uh, and to vet stories like the one that we just did a little more carefully uh in retrospect um jeremy says yeah obviously catch needs to reevaluate his sources it goes that way sometimes uh we will 
again, try to do better. Hey, guys, appreciate you hanging out with us for the last hour-ish. Do us a solid. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. We're creeping up on 13,000 or so. And we will do this again. I don't know. I was thinking we might do a scrimmage report story, but maybe not. We'll play it by ear. If nothing else, you'll see us on Monday for the Monday Overreaction Show. Uh, until then, you guys be careful. Uh, I was going to say you guys take care. Oh, super of chat. Other. Super chats. Did you get all the super chats done? I didn't. Uh, I just saw someone, uh, A. Mars, threw that up there. Damn, what source we fighting? He had Twitter imploding last night. Can't really answer that question, but I'll acknowledge uh, the remark itself. Another super chat, given the practice reports and your sourcing indicated. Otherwise, how much is this due to the idea that Sarkeesian has bet the proverbial farm on yours? Probably some. I mean, we've discussed that during the show. Yours is Sark's guy. And quite frankly, if yours does not pan out, I don't know that Steve Sarkeesian is going to make it at Texas. So those two are kind of connected at the hip. Uh, another super chat question from Jay. I have not listened much, just joined, but I messaged you about it being viewers earlier. Thank you, Jay. I don't remember seeing that message, but thank you. Uh, let's see another little super chat. Let the kid air it out on September 3rd, six touchdowns. All right. <laughs> okay. Hey, you got your you got your super chat comment in. Uh, buy or sell? Sark has created a false narrative since day one on purpose. I mean, I think he's kind of BS us a little bit, like saying that both quarterbacks are performing incredibly well. But no, I don't. Whatever whatever's happened in the last twenty four hours. Uh, I don't think Sark has created a false narrative, but hell, what do I know? He sure had this thing ready and queued up this morning. Uh, although I would say this, if that were the case, I don't think some of the other competitors of ours would have put out this morning essentially the same thing that we reported yesterday. I mean, everybody got burned on this a little bit. I mean, all three of the major Texas sites literally reported within a 24 hour window, a version of what we reported. So, you know, unless I mean, Sark I mean I'm looking at one and I, you know, I won't name their names, but it goes blank believes if Hudson card has a good scrimmage on Saturday, he'll be named the starter for the opener. Doesn't mean the quarterback will be over, but it means that the ball is once again in, in cards court. So, you know, uh, I, I suppose some of these questions should probably be asked of all of us because I can't answer for other websites and other reporters. Uh, I can only answer for ours. Uh, Sark's not the guy that I have an issue with. So, you know, I guess that's the best way to answer that question. Uh, another super chat. Who catches his first touchdown pass? It Will it be in the red zone or a bomb? Doesn't change for me, Anwar. I'm sticking with Xavier Worthy. Yeah, I'm still, I still think I'll go, you know, Bijan Robinson. <laughs> just, just, just to, just to, to mix it up is all it is. Uh, this one's kind of funny. Catch hasn't been this despondent oh. since. Dot dot dot. I mean, on a professional level, I'm pretty pissed right now. Way more pissed than the Kyler Murray thing, because I just got that one wrong. I mean, that was me giving a number in a moment, and then context at that point no longer mattered. I would say, you know what's hard? For... The M Mississippi deal turned into such a weird deal. I mean – as if the state of Mississippi doesn't have shit to answer for, but like I was getting called all kinds of names and Anwar was having to back me up to people who thought somehow I was racist. So that one, 
that one sticks out. I would say on a personal level, I've dealt with some things recently that would kind of have me on that level, but yeah, maybe, maybe the old Miss thing in 2014 on a professional level, Kyler, I, I'm having a hard time thinking of anything else on a professional level. I'm really pissed today at full transparency. Uh, <laughs> Has this one even popped up yet? I'm sorry. Last super chat question. The gas station girl was a mistake. <laughs> you know, That's one of the reasons so why I random. love doing this on war is that we can that laugh. Oh, so random. The, the <laughs> okay. There, there you go. There you go. There's our last super chat comment. Again, referencing a story from... 23 years ago. <laughs> I guess yeah. the good news on war is I've been relevant for a long time. And I guess the bad news. I think the bad news was your internet froze again. I think I'm back. It's doing some weird things. Can you hear me now? Yeah. All right, look, for myself and Anwar Richardson, uh, hold on. I'm going to ban this dude from the chat forever. All right, for myself and Anwar Richardson, uh, I'm about to curse at the end of this. So I'll just say goodbye. You guys be good to each other. Uh, we'll talk to you next week.